Has your relationship with your 3D printer gone stale or routine? Maybe it's time to revitalize your romance and put some spice back into your life. What if you could relive those feelings that you had for each other when you first brought her home? Today I'm going to walk through the basic workflow of a 3D printer, and by the end of the video I want to show you how to build a long-term relationship with your 3D printer. The very first step in a 3D printing workflow is obtaining a 3D model of the object that you want to print. 3D models are most often saved in a mesh format that contain thousands or even millions of little geometric triangles. The most common file format is the STL, although the 3MF file format has recently gained popularity. There are basically two options for getting a 3D model onto your computer. You can either download one from the internet or create one yourself using a 3D modeling software. There are a bunch of free websites like Thingiverse that will host the 3D mesh files. Some designers will even offer their 3D mesh files for purchase through a digital download. On the other hand, you can design your own part and generate the 3D mesh file for printing. But to do that, you're gonna need a 3D modeling software, and luckily there's a ton of free options to choose from. All of them will offer slightly different features. The next step in a 3D printing workflow is preparing the 3D mesh file for printing. This is often called slicing your model because you use software to slice your model into layers and generate G-code for each layer of your model. Again, there are so many free options for slicing software. Two of the most popular ones are Cura and Prusa Slicer. No matter which slicer software you use, the process is the same. You'll import your 3D mesh file into the slicer and adjust the settings to get what you want. There are so many settings to change in a slicer software and this can often be paralyzing for people that are new to 3D printing. My advice is to download a profile specific for your 3D printer model. This profile will already have most of the settings adjusted for you for good performance and print quality. I would suggest sticking to the default settings for your first few prints and then start adjusting things like layer height and print speeds as you get more comfortable. Once you slice the model with the settings you've selected, you'll get an estimated print time as well as how much filament you'll use. Most 3D printers have a USB and or an SD card slot for reading your generated G-code files. I will typically put my G-code files on a flash drive so that I can plug it into my 3D printer. Before I go any further, let me tell you about Altium, who is the sponsor of this video. Altium makes a PCB design software called Altium Designer. If you've ever done any sort of electrical design, you're gonna wanna check out Altium Designer. In my career as an electrical engineer, I've used a lot of different software, and let's be honest, most of it is crap. That is not the case with Altium Designer. It is beautifully designed, it's modern, and they're continually updating it to have the latest features. What's cool about Altium Designer is that it's an all-in-one platform. Some of the other software that I've used, you have to use different programs to do your schematic capture, and then your board layout, and then your component selection, and your netlist, and it's a huge mess. That's not the case with Altium Designer. It's all built into one package. Another cool thing about Altium is that it has cloud features. It's got something called Altium 365, which is a cloud workspace that allows you to collaborate with other people and do version control. If you want to get a better idea of what you can make with Altium Designer, go follow them on Instagram and there's lots of different examples of what people have made using their software. If you're ready to take your PCB design to the next level, go check out Altium Designer and you can do that by clicking on the link in the description and when you sign up for a subscription you'll get a 30% discount. Altium is an awesome company. They believe in what I do here on this channel and they make these videos possible, so go check them out. I really appreciate you supporting the sponsors and I appreciate Altium for sponsoring this video. The final step in your 3D printing workflow is the actual printing of the part. Every 3D printer will have a different interface, but the general principles are the same. First, you'll make sure that you have filament installed in your 3D printer. I use PLA on most of my projects, but there are a ton of different types of 3D printer filaments. Make sure you do some research to learn about all the different types of 3D printer filament to find the right one for your project. On your 3D printer, you'll navigate to the file you want to print and select it for printing. The printer will take a few minutes to heat up the extruder and the heated print bed if it has one. Once the printer is heated, it will move the extruder or hot end to the starting location and start the print. A 3D printer heats up the plastic filament and pushes it through a small hole in the extruder. The melted plastic is deposited onto the print bed one layer at a time. Each layer is deposited onto the previous layer until the part reaches its full height. At this point, your 3D printed part is complete. I will usually let my 3D printer cool down all the way before attempting to remove the 3D printed part. Depending on your printer and the size of the part, it's sometimes really difficult to remove the part from the print bed. Take your time and be patient. You don't wanna damage the print bed while removing parts. This basic workflow will help you get started in 3D printing. But what happens after you print your first Benji boat, for example? What should you print next? I have a lot of family and friends ask about getting a 3D printer, and I always ask them the same question. What is it that you actually want to print with your 3D printer? Sometimes they'll have specific things they wanna print, 
but other times they don't have a good answer to that question. The truth is, after a while, you're gonna get tired of printing little trinkets like Baby Yoda figures to put on your desk. I mean, don't get me wrong, Baby Yoda is really freaking cute, but that's not what you bought a 3D printer for, right? Then after a while, you'll put the 3D printer in the back corner of your garage and will start collecting dust. This does not have to be the end of your story though. Here's what you need to do. First, you need to expand your vision of what this technology can do. Before I got my first 3D printer, I wasn't sure that I would use it that often. That was until I bought one and realized that it had so much more potential. There was an enormous value that I was missing. I started to find lots of little problems that could be solved using 3D printing. Luckily, I had quite a bit of 3D modeling experience and I was able to design things on my computer and then print them out. My biggest advice for people who want to get a 3D printer is to spend some time to learn some basic 3D modeling skills. Once you learn how to model your own parts, suddenly owning a 3D printer becomes a lot more valuable. You will start to find solutions to problems that are unique to you. This is the secret to establishing a long-term relationship with your 3D printer. Let me give you a few examples of what I mean. My cousin Drew wanted to build a recording booth out of PVC pipe, so he went down to the hardware store and spent hours on the aisle looking for all the right fittings and really couldn't find what he was looking for. He had a really unique set of requirements for this recording booth and really couldn't find the right fittings for what he wanted to do. So he came to me and we spent five or 10 minutes modeling up the right parts that he needed and printing them out and it worked really well. Here's another really good example. I have all of these cables. There's USB cables and HDMI cables and cables for my oscilloscope and they used to just be sitting around in a box or on the floor and it wasn't a good solution. So I took a few minutes and I modeled up this wall mounted cable rack and it just has slots for the cables to slide into and it gets them off the floor and they can hang vertically and I can sort them by their type or by their use and it's just a much better cleaner solution. That's something that you can do with a 3D printer. Another good example is when I was building the porch swing for my wife. I had to drill holes in each one of the slats that went on the porch swing and I wanted to get a good precise location on each one so what I did was modeled up a quick little jig so that I could drill holes in each one of the slats and it was very repeatable and it made the whole process go much quicker. If you have an example of you solving a problem like this using a 3D printer I'd love to hear about it down in the comments. I use the principles that I discussed in this video in pretty much every project video that I do. If you want to see an example of that you should watch the videos where I built my own one wheel from scratch. You can do that by clicking on this playlist. You can also watch more more practical skills for makers videos by clicking on this playlist. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. My name is Zach and I look forward to seeing you next time.